Uh, welcome to this meeting. Um, it's technically not a meeting of the Board of Selectmen, but it is a uh, hearing informational session that we have put together. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kelly, our town administrator, for assembling this uh, this evening. It's to uh, have a conversation with you and talk to you about the proposed uh, DEP regulations uh, regarding mitigating nitrogen. And many of you have heard in the news, you've read it in the newspaper, um, about some of these onerous uh, regulations that uh, communities from Cape Cod, uh, you know, working their way towards a Cushnet, Fairhaven, New Bedford, uh, potentially could be under. From what I understand, uh, this is not a done deal. It's in the information gathering uh, process. Um, the Board of Selectmen, uh, in mid-October, we met with DEP, where they presented this to us, and you will see that we're going to replay about 15 minutes of that meeting, and quite frankly, that is probably the best information that you will get on this issue. Uh, the, again, the purpose of this meeting this evening is to hear from you. Uh, the Board of Selectmen, we have voiced our opposition to this, uh, not only in that meeting, but subsequent to that. Um, and there's a process, and so we will be submitting our letter of opposition, um, and this is part of that process. We will um, take the video, include that in the presentation to the DEP. Uh, there on your right at that table there is form letters that we, if you have not signed, we ask that you do sign, and we will submit that again in our packet. There was also a sign-in, um, there was a sign-in uh, document earlier when you walked in as well. And look, this is um, the democratic process at its best. If there's something that you do not believe in, that you think is not right for you or right for our community, this is the way to do that. This is, as, as much, this is a grassroots movement at its best. Uh, we're fortunate tonight we have Representative Paul Schmidt, who is our legislator um, representative in uh, Beacon Hill. Senator Montigny, who could not be here today, uh, unfortunately is in Boston but he did send a letter in opposition that I will read and it's very it's very strong in opposition uh, so tonight this is your meeting um, we can go about it if anybody wants to speak you're more than welcome to uh, however you know if, if you feel like it's going to be redundant um, then you know it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to join folks uh, to do that so um, again let's have this a conversation uh, this is an opportunity to get stuff off your chest, and uh, so we welcome that. My colleagues, Mr. Gasper and Mr. Hinckley. Mr. Gasper, is there anything you'd like to say? Not at the moment, sir. Mr. Hinckley? Okay. I think you're covered. With that said, I do have a few folks. Give them an opportunity to speak. Representative Schmidt, um, if you'd like to maybe bring this back to the, uh, to the podium and uh, set that up, you yeah. can take it from there. Oh, well, thank you very much, and I want to thank uh, Selectman Wonar, Selectman Gaspar, and Selectman Hinckley for allowing me to say a few words. And I know that uh, you have already uh, expressed your deep concern about the way this has been proposed. And uh, I'm here also uh, to listen and to reflect your concerns to DEP. My colleague, uh, Representative Strauss, as you know, uh, I now have the honor of representing precincts two and three in uh, Kushnet. My colleague, Representative Strauss, uh, represents precinct one. So between the two of us, we are your team, and uh, we are here to express your concerns. Uh, I have to say that if I were with D DEP, I think I would have presented this in a slightly different way. Here's my take <coughs> Between here and the Cape, and it, it starts at Westport, where I'm from. From Westport right up through Mattapoisett, up the Cape, there's a nitrogen problem. It evidences itself with uh, severe problems in water. We all have to start doing something about this. So DEP has said, towns ought to start working on this. You have time, each town has time to work on it. By the way, 
Westport is a high priority area. We have so many homes built right along the river, and all those homes have septic systems, not sewers. So we have a real issue. The good news is that a Kushnut is not that level of priority. You're not that level of priority. But I think that, a, that DEP should have said, every town ought to be working on this, and we, DEP, can help. There's grant money available for planning. And by the way, Bill Strauss and I uh, can certainly be of help. We've already gotten uh, a cushion of $50,000 in planning money, and, and, and we're, we stand ready to advocate for more. So there's planning money. But DEP is saying, if your community doesn't do anything, then the only recourse would be, as they propose, that septic systems have got to be upgraded to include denitrification. And as you all have read, that can be very expensive. No one wants to see any community to have to go down that route. So we hope that Akushna, Westport, all the communities on the Cape will start planning and taking steps. In Westport, for instance, uh, we now require that new builds, new construction, have denitrification system. Their septic systems have to have the denite in it. And when you put one of these in, I'm told when you put it in brand new, the extra cost uh, for the denite is, is relatively small compared to the total cost of the home and the property. So, uh, and DEP has taken note of that, that Westport, what Westport has done, and they said, you're in a pretty good position to Westport. So, we're very happy that our Board of Health has been working on this, and I know that your Board of Health has been working on this. You've already put sewers in certain the, in, 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 in the most at-risk portions of town. That's good. So, uh, to me, the system, the, the situation is not as dire as you might imagine. But it's awful important that you all be here to express your concerns so that this can continue to be something that works well for a cushion. If you don't pay attention, the situation could be not could be more dire than it is. So that's that's my two cents based on my experience in Westport. And uh, I like your select board, your town administrator, FinCom. Yep. Uh, and the Board of Health are all here to listen. And with that, I'll say thanks for having me. Thank you very much, David. Uh, back to that back. Yep. Yeah, we do have uh, one of our town officials, Pete Benoit from the Finance Committee. I know he's on a time crunch. Uh, uh, Mike Boucher, Chairman of the Finance Committee, asked to uh, say a few words. <coughs> Good evening, folks. I'm Mike Boucher. I'm the Chairman of the Finance Committee here in town. And one of the biggest problems that, that we had um, as a committee, and I'm sure the board uh, would share the sentiment as well, is the Mass DEP was trying to pass these two proposed amendments by January 3rd without really any public comment. Uh, they didn't come down here in person to speak to any of us. Uh, they did a, a brief Zoom meeting, which you know, was, it didn't give us a, lot, a whole lot of information. So the lack of... Uh, Public comment was, I think, a big issue uh, for me. And of course, the other issue is the funding of this. I don't think any resident should have to come up with 20, 30, $40,000 out of their pocket 
especially in this time when we're all dealing with increased costs and everything. Um, I'm 100% against this. I don't want to see our town designated um, as a problem area. Right now we're not, as uh, Representative Schmidt just said. Um, but if those amendments passed, then that would give the Mass DEP the ability to just designate us as a problem area. And then, if that's the case, if we don't have a watershed permit in place, then residents would have a five-year window to do this upgrade. Now, with a watershed permit in place, if I'm wrong on any of this, just correct me, gentlemen, um, we, it will give us a 20-year window. And one good thing, like Mr. <coughs> Schmidt said, is that several years ago, we already did a comprehensive wastewater management plan. We started it. So I believe that would help us tremendously in getting a watershed permit if we needed one. I would rather not even need one, and I would rather not see us designated as a problem area. Um, and I just, uh, I mean, we're here for the residents. Uh, I'm, a re I'm speaking as a resident and a representative of this town. Um, I don't want to have to come up with uh, funding for this, and I'm sure none of us in, here, in this room want to come up with funding for this either, especially when we don't even really know if we're contributing to the problem. I mean, so the other thing is the testing. How are they going to test each individual homeowner? Like, if you have a perfectly working septic system and you have, you've passed the Title V, then why should you have to add this nitrogen recovery system on? That's, that's just my take on it. Uh, I've done a little bit of homework with this. There's a lot more to learn. Um, but I just, I don't want to see our town rushed into anything. And we need more time before any of this uh, gets passed. That's pretty much all I have to say. Thanks Thank for coming you. out, folks. Pepinoid Finance Committee. Um, Mike covered a lot of it, but you know, my main concerns that Mike expressed also are the fact that we're finding out about it realistically after it was supposed to have been passed. We don't have any say in what the guidelines are for being a high risk community. Right now, we're at a moderate risk. Is that how they put it? We're in the, the middle line. Where do we fall in that middle line? Five months from now, are we gonna be a high risk community and have five years to try and upgrade all of our septic systems before we even found out any, anything about it? I know it would be a financial struggle for me to put in 30 or $40,000. I'm sure most of the people in this community, it's the same way. Now, five years, hey, here you go, you bought your house six months ago, 10 years ago, whatever it happens to be, you've been a great member of this community you pay your taxes, which went up significantly this year as well. You know, and I, I, I understand the chuckles about it because it went up significantly for me. But I can tell you as being a member of FinCom that there isn't any fat to trim in our budget. So if anybody has questions on where the money is going and why we're paying our taxes, please come to a FinCom meeting and ask your questions or express your concerns because there is no fat in the budget. There wasn't fat in the budget last year and there's less fat this year. <clears throat> My concern is the main thing with all legislature that seems to be coming through now is that if it has an agenda, you don't find out about it until the vote's already been taken. And this will allow us to try and put a stop to that vote. This will give us more clarity in terms of asking the DEP to give us the guidelines they're gonna, they're gonna go through. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but isn't there also a question of whether or not septic systems actually contribute a major portion to nitrogen to begin with? Right. Uh, I mean. Well, I think, and Bobby Hinckley did some research on this as well. Um, there's a combined sewer overflow um, from wastewater treatment plants, I believe, and apparently they are the biggest contributors um, to the excess nitrogen overflowing into the waterways, not just individual septic users. So, I mean, there, there has to be a way to delineate this before they can just, you know, say, you gotta come up with this money for this. I mean, we're a farming community. Could, could the nitrogen fertilizer that we use to try and grow our crops, yep. is that gonna be a, a major contributor, not the septic systems? The golf course. The golf, golf courses, yeah. all of it. Cranberry right. bogs. So, our frustration, at least as part of the, the finance committee, is the fact that 
great, you've got a level that's there and you want to do something about it. But to me, this is as asinine as saying we're going to stop eating beef because of cow farts. <laughs> or let's get rid of chickens because chickens fart too. Um, no, that, that's where I stand. I'm firmly against it and I apologize. I have to leave the meeting early. My daughter's being inducted into the National Honor Society. So I've got to make that presentation for her. But thank you all. I just wanted to, one, one second, it just before we go to the, yeah. to the DEP presentation, I just want to make sure the reason why we had our finance committee members here and speak is that at some point, you know, as a board and as a community, we may need some resources to help put together a plan, right? And that, so by having the finance committee understand this uh, and, and be part of this process, um, you know, we'll try to chase down as many, as many grants and earmarks as possible, but I think, you know, what the representative said is we, at some point we are going to have to come up with a plan, we are going to have to do something that gets us out of the crosshairs of DEP, and so having finance committee buy-in uh, and understand the issue I think was really important. Uh, so with that said, I think it would be really helpful to all of you to see the presentation that the DEP made uh, beforehand. Uh, in mid-October, you can kind of see some of the questions that we were asking during that time. Uh, so with that said, Nick, if you can do that, um, hopefully we're not distracting. We can, we can move and you guys can take a look at this. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Jaron Mountain, the Deputy Regional Director for the Bureau of Water Resources at DEP's Lakeville office. And sticking with our office, we also have Jeff Gould. Jeff? Good evening. And Dave Burns. I'm Dave Burns, Lickish uh, Board Writer and Municipal Facilities in the Lakeville office. And we have a couple of folks from our Boston office, Mary Beth Chubb. Hi everyone, Mary Beth Chubb. I'm with the Wastewater Sector Chief out of the Boston office with Title Five and Groundwater Discharges. And Maria Pino. Good afternoon, I'm Maria Pino. I'm the Director of the Division of Municipal Services and I oversee the State Revolving Fund Program out of the Boston office of Mass DEP. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we have, we have heard that um, we, we don't have a lot of time, so you asked not to, to give us the presentation, which is why we set the slide, so you can at least look through them at the leisure. Um, the slide pretty much uh, mimicked the information that we sent out the 1st of June. We sent out this information to all the towns that are potentially impacted by the new mentioned sensitive area regulations that uh, should be coming out this fall. Um, so because these, these regs are a little uh, involved, we're doing it a little bit differently where we are reaching out to the towns to kind of go over what the regulations include. Um, but have we're still been adopted or are these, in, are these draft regulations? So I'm, I'm getting to that. So we're, we're still going through the formal, the formal process. We're yeah, planning on putting them out, uh, draft regulations out for comment. Um, Mary Beth could probably tell us a little bit more what that time frame looks like right now. So they should be getting out to comment um, early November. Okay. And how long is that comment period? The comment period is 30 days. 30 days. So we go from November to mid-December because okay. we afford a little extra time for mail and catch it up. And the, um, the promulgation date is early 2023, January, February 2023. I just so, I don't want to be um, so if there's a 30-day comment period and then you're looking to adopt them in January is that right yes so that seems to be an aggressive time frame if you're soliciting comments and then looking to adopt like 30 days later after the holiday season is that truly a, a comment period or I, I guess if they're if you get a slew of comments that are in you know not in alignment with the regulations and what have you how do you course correct if you're already looking to it seems like a pretty aggressive uh, adoption time frame it is okay it is, so is it, yes. the comment period real or is it just like 
window dressing. I'm not, I, again, I'm trying to, I don't want to be rude. I just want to make sure we know what we're dealing with. No, it's not window dressing at all. It's a valid comment period, and we will be taking the comments in from start to finish of the comment period, which can be extended okay. should the need be determined to be extended. And should, um, you know, comments be received that are completely contrary to the draft, then yes, okay. that would warrant not promulgating the regulations, you know, immediately following okay. the schedule that we put forth. So it is adaptable. All right. Yes. Thank you. Real quick, Mr. Chairman. So you said 30 day comment period. What I got inside your uh, slideshow here, it's for uh, natural resource areas, NSAs. It says you have a 60 day public comment period. So is there two different comment periods that we're discussing here? Yeah. So what you're looking at in the slideshow is what's in the regulations. Okay. So that 60 day comment period is referring to the designation of a natural resource area NSA in the second category, which a cushionet would be part of, if I'm correct in that, Gerard, yes, yes. the second category of a natural resource area NSA. That meaning that you would not be automatically designated when these regs go into effect. It would be at a later time. Okay. Right. So I, I apologize for going off track. If you want to just maybe describe <coughs> the draft regs. Um, and then we can get into process afterwards. I apologize. That's okay. Do you want me? I mean, I can very quickly just gloss through. Some yeah, I think that'd be great. Thank you. Covering the content and yeah. just quickly go through it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do I have the ability to share? I do. Thank you. Okay. You have them open. I do. Thank you. Everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so all right, so very briefly, currently Title V has nitrogen sensors for drinking water protection focuses, and we're not changing those at all. What we're proposing is establishing a new nitrogen sensitive area with that we're calling a natural resource area NSA. So the first group, and I'm not going to read the slide, is the Cape Cod communities. They are under the Cape Cod 208 plan, and 30 watersheds on Cape Cod have nitrogen total maximum daily loads already established. And so for those areas, their designation is automatic when these regs are promulgated. The second group are embayments or sub embayments that they may have a TMDL already. They may have an MEP report leading to the development of TMDL, but it hasn't been done yet. They may not even have a scientific evaluation even started. Um, and for those, it's not an automatic designation. It would happen at a later time um, based on that scientific evaluation or that TMDL when DEP designates them. And that's where the 60-day public comment period comes in. When DEP designates it as a natural resource area, there's a 60-day public comment period afforded for that designation. When an area is designated under Title V, that starts a five-year time clock for the individual system owner to upgrade their septic system and install best available nitrogen reducing technology. The other option is the community can apply for and operate under a watershed permit. The definition for best available nitrogen reducing technology is lowest effluent total nitrogen performance value with certification of general use from DEP. Um, you could also use piloting or provisional um, systems as long as they had equal or better total nitrogen performance. So again, the timing for this implementation of designation for the Cape Cod communities, those 30 watersheds under the Cape Cod 208 and TMDL is automatic when the regs are promulgated. For other communities that may have a nitrogen TMDL or the MEEP report, they're gonna go through a designation process by DEP and that's gonna happen at a later time. 
the exemption from the requirement on the individual system owner to install vestibule nitrogen technology is for the community to obtain a watershed permit. So in addition to these revisions to Title V, we're also establishing regulations for a watershed permit. And the watershed permit is a 20-year voluntary permit instead of a traditional five-year permit. It's issued to the local government unit, could be a combination of local government units. It allows, excuse me, allows communities the ability to utilize a greater range of technologies, both alternative and conventional. Uh, it's based on a comprehensive watershed management plan, it's town approved, and it uses adaptive management, which means you can um, utilize the technology, evaluate its effectiveness, and then adjust and adapt pending the results of that technology. So the watershed management plan, comprehensive or targeted, um, the long-term plan for the community as a whole to address water quality impairments. And for those watersheds with the TMDL, the plan has to be designed to achieve at least 75% pollutant reduction within that 20-year time frame of the permit. Um, and there is a caveat in the draft regs that MassDEP could determine an alternative schedule as appropriate uh, based on watershed-specific issues. And then there's, you can read what the application will need to include. Um, and standard provisions, there'll be annual reports, the middle five-year evaluations, um, permits that are issued by DEP, for example, for a wastewater treatment facility that had a groundwater discharge permit. That groundwater discharge permit is maintained, but it is incorporated as part of the watershed permit by reference. Um, and there are the public notice requirements for issuance, modification, revocation, determination of the watershed permit. And that kind of follows the standard public notice process. Um, it would be issued in the monitor, a newspaper circulated in the area of the watershed, on DEP's webpage. Uh, it's a common period of at least 60 days, and a hearing can be um, provided if requested by the permittee or deemed necessary by DEB. And then there's also um, public notice process for some instances of modifying the permit um, and also if DEP were to revoke it or the permittee were to terminate their permit coverage, um, that would go through a public notice process and that's because for each of those actions upon revocation or termination, the requirement to install that best available nitrogen reducing technology again falls to the individual um, under Title V. So this is just, these are the areas that are going to be impacted. Don't squint trying to read the tiny print there. It's just to show the, this is the areas of impact. And then I'll, I'll ask Gerard to run through these because these are the slides that are specific to a question. Okay, thank, thank you, Mary Beth. And, and actually, Mary Beth, I don't know if you want to speak to the, the website that we're putting together and some of the information we have there, or do we do that at the end? Do we, do that? we do it at the end, but we can, yeah, we are, we are populating a website and continually <coughs> making updates to it, and that, that is in the website address is in that PowerPoint presentation that you have. It's one of the final slides. And then one of the things that we have on the, the website is four low-key towns have been working on a watershed permit now for almost five years. They're actually starting to do their five-year review. It's the Pleasant <coughs> Betty Group. Um, and so that information is up there to kind of show you what, it, it's almost like a pilot watershed permit to kind of show you what um, we're expecting from the permit when, when a Christian gets around to, to working on this, if that's the way they, they choose to go. So early on, Mary Beth mentioned the timing of when the new regulations will kick in for different towns. So all the Cape towns, because they have that QO8 designation, it's as soon as the regulations kick in, then they have to start, start working on them. The other towns, including the Kushnet, that don't, that are part of the QO8, we look to see if they have an approved PMDL and the three estuaries that the Christian watersheds may be impacting none of those three estuaries do. The Christian obviously is uh, watersheds are impacting Fairhaven, New Bedford, Inner Harbor, 
that's Kentucky Bay and may be impacting uh, Mattapuisa Highway. Some of the watersheds from Mattapuisa Highway, I think, extend up into um, the Cushman. None of these have a TMDL. Um, two of them have a MEP report that indicates that is some nitrogen issues um, and are in the TMDL process, but it's not completed. We could use that information to designate it as a uh, nitrogen sensitive area, NRD uh, area, um, or we can also wait till the TMDL is complete and approved. And then Metapoise at Harbor is even further down uh, because they have haven't even uh, those studies have even been started to evaluate Metapoise at Harbor. So basically, in for the question, the NSA designations are down the road. Uh, so it's not something that's going to kick in right away. Um, we have to, you know, finish looking at the data, determine if it, if there is a nitrogen impairment, and then go through the public process to designate them as an NSA. Um, next slide, please. So we have a couple of what we've been calling bubble slides that kind of walk you through the process. Basically, go if they go over in a little more detail what I just said. So because of, um, you know. Would the Christian have the automatic um, natural resource area and a state designation? Again, because they're not the subject to a 208, they would not. So we jump over to the second green box. Do they have any watersheds with TMDLs? Again, no, but as I mentioned, there is some work that's been done that indicates there's nitrogen issues. And then it talks about how we go through the public process with that 60 day comment period on the NSA designation. And then once that is all said and done, uh, then uh, the question would have a choice uh, to either have the residents um, install upgraded uh, upgrade their systems to IA systems or uh, do a net uh, portion permit. And the next slide is very similar except it just talks about map voice power because the, the difference is they don't even have a member for yet. So they are a little further behind than the others. So when it comes to when a cushion would have to uh, deal with these new regulations, it's, it's down the road. So we wanted to share that with you, right? Because I'm sure as you've read in the newspaper and you've got information out there, you're thinking, all right, how is this going to impact me in a cushion? What the heck is the Board of Selectmen doing? What are the Board of Health doing? And so we put this meeting together, one, to kind of revisit the conversation that we had with DEP, provide some information, but really to show you what we're doing, right? So our action plan, and I really want to open it up to, to conversation to hear from the residents, but the action plan really is, we've been in touch with our local legislators. They are gonna work overtime to ensure that this process is a fair one and that a Kushnet and other municipalities don't unfairly get caught up in some of the issues, right? So that's number one. Number two, we need your help of helping us make the case, right? Not only on the economic side, but just on the on you know the the day to day, and that's being here tonight is really important for that. Again, I'm going to remind you if you have not signed the letter, granted it's a form letter, but still your signature when you came in and your signatures on those form letters. Rep. Schmidt will tell you, carry a great deal of weight, right? And it's really important. Numbers it's, count. Numbers count. And again, the personal testimony is very important because we're going to take this video and package that in our presentation. So again, tonight is to help you understand our action plan. So when you're reading about this in the newspaper, and you're talking to family members or friends, you can at least report back that we've got an action plan in place on how we want to handle this. Um, so with that said, if you have comments that you'd like to make, please come up one at a time. Um, we just, you know, we didn't really do a sign-up sheet. Let's just do this kind of like on the honor system. So come on up, please. We'll just try to do this as orderly as possible. Hi. My name is Anita Davis. I own Summerwinds Farm, 1528 Main Street of Krishna. I've been there for 23 years. It's part of the old Grayley Farm, and I'm proud of it. 
Um, I just want to say you guys are doing a great job. I'm great. I'm grateful to be here at this meeting. I'm grateful that you put it together. Grateful for this gentleman who was also a farmer. And the gentleman before us, the financial person, said that um, a Kushner is a farming community. It was a farming community. It no longer is, okay? The reality of it is we have multiple homes going up, taking old farms and developing it. That's what the reality of it. I think DEP, Department, Environmental Perfect, uh, Prevention, Protection, Protection, you got it, right? It's supposed to protect us. They're not doing that. They missed the mark. It has nothing to do with our septic systems, not a damn thing. That's what we need to really focus on, that they miss the mark. It's, you said it, it starts with us and it ends with us. If we all do our part, it, we wouldn't be polluting our bays, our streams, our ponds. It starts with us. It has nothing to do with our septic systems. What it has to do with is the chemicals that are produced in this country. The chemicals that people use, one product alone, what we've seen in the last five years, Roundup, people spray it on their lawns, sidewalks, kill weeds, right? It causes cancer and Parkinson's disease, right? Has nothing to do with our septic systems. It has to do with people producing chemicals. DEP has missed the mark. That's my argument. I would take that to court. They're like trying to um, target people, again, the wrong people. Target the big companies. Don't target us. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars for our septic systems? That's outrageous. Look at the price of eggs, man. Come on. Are you kidding me? You know, if you want a little piece of land, they want it for solar farms. Please, give it up. Protect us. Don't invade us. Protect us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kevin Smith. I'd just like to say thank God the DEP is able to do this in 30 years. What We couldn't get them a year and a half to come down here and check out this quarry to see if there was a problem with it or not. They couldn't be bothered. They're sitting in their, their little cubby holes behind their Zoom meetings in Boston, and now they come out, they're going to do this within 30 to 60 days and, and railroad us? Science is subjective. Science is, is the ability to always question. Okay, where is the, who's doing the study for this? Before they come in and they say we're gonna to have to pay $30,000. Also, according to the information I read online and everything else, they're paying for the people in Falmouth to do this. Who's gonna pay for us? They're paying for the, the richest part of the state to do all this and they're gonna come here, the working people, and stiff us. Not to mention you have to have two inspections a year with this at $650 a whack, and you have to do it for two to three years. You know, you, you people really need to take a look at all the information that's online about this and how Marion and all the Cape that have all the money are getting this all done for them, and they're gonna come up here. Not to mention the fact, in the next 20 years, they can't even get all of this done. There isn't enough contractors to do it. So what's going to happen? You know, we may have a 20-year designation. We're going to have to wait that long anyway. But my biggest thing, who's doing the study? And don't tell me it's people in the state. It's got to be a private institute like HUI or somebody like that. HUI does, they don't just do ocean research. They do other environmental research. Because like I said, science is subjective. Depends on who you talk to. They will disagree. That's the, that's science. Thank you. Great point, and I, I think it's a good segue. Uh, Senator Montigny asked me to read this letter on his behalf. So if you just again indulge me, Chairman Wonar, members of the board, I write to you today to express my concern regarding the Title V regulations that seek to impact nitrogen-sensitive areas (NSAs) throughout our region. From the outset on this particular issue, the Department of Environmental Protection 
lost the public's trust by failing to meaningfully engage local leaders such as yourselves and residents who will ultimately bear the cost burden of these recommended changes. Their failure to readily publish the membership of the policy subcommittee tasked with helping to formulate this proposal only fueled this distrust. Too many of my constituents, some of whom live in a cushion, are rightfully concerned about what these changes will mean for their financial stability. This is especially worrying for those <coughs> living on fixed incomes and already struggling to make their dollars stretch beyond food, medicine, and other basic needs. Adding a bill potentially valued at tens of thousands of dollars to their household budgets without a very clear and compelling justification is not fair. While it is no secret that nitrogen pollution <coughs> presents a very real and serious threat to the health of our waterways and surrounding habitats, we must find a more balanced approach towards resolving the issue. Government bureaucrats nor wealthy, out-of-touch environmental activists should, be, should not be jamming costs regularly changing upon, should, should be not be jamming costs regulatory changes upon hard-working middle-class residents who will have to pay the costs associated with these changes. To date, the department has failed to identify when South Coast communities will be impacted and has been unable to confirm whether there'll be enough licensed contractors to perform that work required to implement these changes. Furthermore, there remains a genuine dis dispute as to whether nitrogen runoff is being driven primarily by household septic systems, for-profit industries, or other activities. It is my strong belief that the regulatory changes should not occur unless the science is clear, but so far we all we have is old data and false comparisons. That's Senator Montigny. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else have, uh, I saw uh, former Selectman DeRoche, you had your hand, hand up? Yes, I did. Please, uh, I just got a couple of brief yeah. questions to uh, ask to see if there's answers to these. I'm Dave DeRoche, 1399 Main Street. And uh, I watched the presentation, and numerous times the DEP representative said, down the road, at a later time, down the road. Have they given any more expansion on that to when they think a Kushnet would be designated NSA? I'm not here there. Okay, because they were very vague about that part. Okay. And then the other question I had is, um, back in 2020, the town adopted a um, CWMP, a uh, Clean Wastewater Management Plan. And is that gonna be effective in uh, because we have two choices from what I understand. You can do it individually or the town can adopt the uh, watershed permit. So I was just interested in seeing if the CWMP is gonna have any impact on the watershed because we already did spend about $80,000 to have an engineering firm come in and give us an idea of this situation and, um, and what we would be facing in the future. So. Yeah. So, Mr. DeRoche, um, the CWMP was passed by the taxpayers. Um, mm -hmm. I was a huge advocate of it. I was one of the biggest proponents of the CWMP in 2016, and it cost the taxpayers um, $300,000 to do that study. Mm -hmm. It was passed in 2016. As you noted, it was completed somewhere around 2019, 2020, and the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. have adopted that. Because we have passed the CWMP, um, and it has been adopted, that would grant us um, the, the ability to apply for the watershed permit and extend this out for 20 years. Because my understanding of the watershed permit is they're going to come in and say how much we're contributing to this nitrogen issue. Right. So they're going to give us an option to do something else instead. Now the CWMP was talking about doing sewers to town. And there again, we run into the issue of money, how much that's going to cost of the individual person. So yeah. I know this is going to be a process. You know, first we have to be designated before anything really starts. So my, you know, my initial question was just to see if they had given me any idea a year, two years before we would be, you know, right. have to make a choice between individual septic replacements or doing the watershed permit. So appreciate your time. Thank you. <coughs> there is one piece of it, and Scott Daggett's here, and he's been a long advocate of cleaning up Lake Street and you know I think that's a that, that'll be a piece of this puzzle um, you know we've secured money at town meeting to try and remediate some of the issues in Lake at Lake Street uh, that campus the, the issue what we found is that the city of New Bedford actually owns the waterway right and so we've been in the process of I think we're pretty much done is getting the city of New Bedford to give us the ability to um, you know 
clean up that area, and so we've uh, contacted a firm. I wish we had done it last year, the two years ago, and Scott first brought it to our attention. Um, but the money's there. We're ready to do it. We're just waiting for the, the, the official okay from the city of New Bedford. And we're going to be working with the DEP. We're going to have to work with the EPA and the DPA, DEP to make the improvements at uh, Lake Street. So hopefully this meeting here will help expedite that process uh, with them. And um, so, you know, just a shout out to Scott. Uh, when you identified this issue a few years ago, it wasn't with this in mind, but because of your advocacy, we might be able to make an impact, you know, in providing a, a mitigation plan. So um, thanks to you on that, Scott. I know you've been long frustrated that we haven't been able to get this thing moving, but, um, you know, the red tape has gotten in the way, and again, not for lack of trying. Is there anybody else who would like to uh, speak? Ms. Dallas. Yeah, I, I, um, <coughs> the, the biggest problem that I have right now, I mean, if you could just, for the record, oh, identify name, okay, my name, name is Rick, Rick, serial number. Rick Ellis. I, I live at 168 Lake Street. Uh, I've lived on that corner of a cushion for the last 67 of my 70 years. I, I'm very familiar with changes in town and, 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 and environmental regulations from another aspect of my life. Unfortunately, I don't even know what to object to. I don't know what the program is. I don't know how long it's going to take to uh, get it going. And I don't know when the requirements of it are going to be implemented. I don't know who's going to enforce it. Uh, two Title V regulation uh, inspections of every septic system in the cushion of the year. When does it start? You know. Uh, Obviously, if you're building a new house on a new lot, you know, to add this to the system isn't a big deal. The whole lot's torn up. You know, all the excavation equipment is there. You know, it's, that's easy. Now, if I take a look at the area, oh, up next to the old White's Farm Dairy, uh, it's, a, it's an older subdivision, it's small lots, there's barely room to put a septic system on each one. If I have to upgrade, or if I was, if, if I had to upgrade one of the houses on that lot, it would be a major deal. I mean, my entire lot would be ripped up, and I would be lucky to even find the room to add something extra. Uh, so I mean, there's a, there's a, there's so many different possibilities here. Do I have to upgrade when my septic system fails? Uh, when do I have to do this septic system uh, inspection? Uh, if I have to do it at all. I mean, if my particular lot isn't in a critical area or isn't one that's even necessary to do anything, well, then I don't have to do anything. I don't know. I don't know anything about this other than the people in charge of this are the same people that gave us a month to comment on a program that has the potential or has a very real effect of costing hundreds of millions of dollars across these new communities, forget about what's happened out on the Cape. I mean, I'm almost 70 now. I'm going to file for my Social Security in a week. Well, if I had to come up in the next couple of years with another twenty to $50,000 to upgrade my ancient septic system on my ancient lot, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can retire just yet. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I'm just kind of rambling, but that's my problem. I just don't know. And it's driven by DEP. I mean, DEP decides what the areas are. They decide whether your study is thorough enough. They decide on what the, the total nitrogen uh, uh, load that the town of Acushnet is going to put on, it looks like the Fairhaven, New Bedford, Inner Harbor. I don't know how much of Acushnet is outside of that particular area. I just don't know. Right. And, and I, would, I would wholeheartedly, anybody that can, first let's do the study and let's see how many people this is going to impact and let's see what the dollar amount is on each of these surrounding communities. And then let's decide what, what needs to be done. Uh, and even then, you know, uh, in the future, 
Is, it, is the future two years out? Is it five years out? Is it 20 years out? I may not even be here in 20 years, so I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Yourself. Sorry to ramble. Please, Don't. please do not apologize. That's why we did this, right? Mm -hmm. You've got stuff that you've got to offer you things on your chest that you want to thank you for that. And I think well, that is the frustration. I mean, that, that would be my first request. Before we start making any decisions about what people should do or not do, let's get the area defined first. Right. You know, and, and I mean, only then can you start to put together a plan that makes sense economically. Right. I mean, like the gentleman was saying before. We don't even have enough contractors in the area to, to convert all these systems. Yeah, I, thank you. Sorry. And I, I do feel that we are somewhat shadow boxing right now, right? But again, really want to impress upon you that we're trying to put together an action plan. And that's what tonight is all about, is putting together an action plan. We were talking to our legislators. But if you look at the map, I mean, if you look at the map, you're telling me this here has the potential to cause this much problem, like this much headache, right? And that's what doesn't compete um, with us here. It's, it's, it appears to be, at least for the town of Cushion, I can't speak to any other municipality, it appears to be a solution in search of a problem, right? And we're not, you know, we feel strongly that we're not there yet. So we want to put together again, we want to put together a plan. I, I just yeah, have one other small comment. You know, I, I, I don't understand the science, but I do know that most of the surge that's going into that Fairhaven, New Bedford Inner Harbor is from the city of New Bedford. And if a cushion it gives clean water to that Inner Harbor, it's what New Bedford does with their combined sewer overflows and the amount of treatment that they're giving uh, their existing sewerage that's going to have the biggest effect on the Fairhaven, New Bedford, Inner Harbor. That just, it just, again, not, not a scientist, but that's what it looks like to me. Is there any, Dave, 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 Dave does somebody want to speak? Yes. So my name is Jen Thomas. I live at 78 Peckham Road. Um, some of my questions about this are, what other studies are they doing? Are they looking at other areas or other pieces of the puzzle? Because like somebody said, it's not just septic systems that are going to be adding to this. It's other companies. It's the pharmaceutical, not the pharmaceuticals, but the pesticides, all the things. So what else are they doing? What else are they looking at? Because if they're only targeting septic systems, that doesn't really make much sense, nor do I feel it would solve the problem, even if we did spend an obnoxious amount of money to upgrade them. So that's I don't know that answer other than I know our legislators have been making the case, and you know, Kevin did earlier about the science. Right? Let's get some science behind this and not just you know, say, well, yes. the path of least resistance, let's go after septic tanks. You know? Right, and to say that they're going to, like, down the road, down the road, down the road. I don't understand why they don't have definitive timelines right. or what they're doing to designate areas or, like, it just, none of it makes sense. It kind of sounds like they're just <laughs> throwing things in the air and seeing what sticks. Exactly. I just want to read um, something that I did a little research on from a local organization and it, it talks about septic systems but we talked a lot about septic systems and the Board of Health here if they want to talk about septic systems. So I'm going to talk about wastewater treatment plants and read off what I've gotten. So it says wastewater treatment plants. Unlike traditional septic systems, wastewater treatment plants can treat sewerage to remove nitrogen. However, they don't eliminate all the nitrogen and many municipal plants don't remove nearly as much as they could. The nitrogen gets emptied into our local waterways where it becomes pollution. In certain parts of the bay, wastewater treatment plants are a large source of nitrogen pollution. For example, the Fayhaven treatment plant has historically discharged to the inner New, New Bedford Harbor, where nitrogen pollution gets trapped inside the hurricane barrier, and at, and at the Marion wastewater treatment plant, 20 acres of unlined sewage lagoons leak nitrogen directly into the ground for nearly 50 years. So wouldn't we think, this is my comment, so wouldn't we think the first thing is to correct the large sources of nitrogen, meaning treatment plants that dump directly or indirectly into the harbor? <coughs> then it goes on to say, stopping nitrogen pollution in Buzzards Bay is a big challenge, one that requires dedicated funding and strong political will. 
The coalition is leading an aggressive effort to fight for clean water and reducing existing sources of nitrogen and making sure no new sources are created. We push the state and federal governments to enforce pollution laws and to deliver funding that our communities need to clean up nitrogen. Our Bay Health data to helps all <coughs> levels of government make the best decisions to protect and restore the Bay. The Bay is resilient and we know it can bounce back, but we must take action now. By working with the federal government, state government, and communities across the Bay, we can save Buzzards Bay for future generations. I'll, I'll stop there. So that's from the Coalition of Buzzards Bay's website. So I guess we know where some of the pressure has come from. It makes sense that we look at, if they already know, and they talked about it in their own article, and it's right on their own webpage, anybody can get the data, because I just did it today again. If that's the case, wouldn't you think the DEP would first look at the largest source of nitrogen pollution that the coalitions basically lobby them and told them what it is? So if it's a sewer treatment plant, i.e., I don't care if it's New Bedford's that's going into the harbor, it's Fairhaven's going into the harbor, it's Marion's going into the harbor, why wouldn't they come up with some funding instead of sticking all those sewer users that are in, going into the sewer treatment plants, why doesn't the state government or federal government that regulates the Clean Water Act, because that's where this regulation comes from, is the Clean Water Act, why wouldn't they give some money to clean up the pollution in our waterways when we spend trillions of dollars fighting wars in foreign countries? Hello. Why don't we all stop and think about what our own government agencies are sticking down our throats first and say enough is enough, figure this out, give us the money, give the sewer treatment plants the money, and test, tell us what the nitrogen load is today, and then treat, do the sewer treatment plants so they're 90%, 100% clear of nitrogen, and let's do a test in five years and see what impact that's had before you come jam it down our throats and say everyone's doing a new um, septic system. Because we all know we're not doing a new septic system. <coughs> the Board of Health member right here, Mr. Davinian, is here to talk about what the Board of Health has done on new septic systems. I hope that's what he's up there to say a little bit about, at least educate some of us on. Um, I, know, I know they have done, done something in the, in the past several years, so Mr. Davinia, the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you. Well said. Um, so I'm Dave Davignan. I live at 33 Ansel White Drive. Um, I happen to be on the Board of Health. Um, my background also is civil engineering. I'm glad that I'm glad that the state rep is here um, because I, I have a lot to say. I, I really hope the state reps listen. Um, I like you, Mr. Schmidt, and I hope you step up for the citizens of Massachusetts against what's going on here. From, I have a good source that tells me the reason this is all coming down is some environmental group suing the state, the DEP. And they're forcing it down uh, our throats, right? It's all behind the scenes. And what they're doing, part of their plan, and if you watch, I, I, went, I was on a webinar, they are arrogant. It's nothing more than window dressing, as Mr. Warner said. This is a done deal. They're gonna shove it down our throats. They may postpone for another 30 days, but they're gonna shove it down our throats. And then what they're doing to the Board of Health is they're putting a gun to our heads and they're making us sign up for a 20-year watershed permit. We don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. So either, either we say no and we give them the middle finger and then they then try and force us to force everybody to put in denitrification systems or we sign up for the 20-year uh, kill plan, right? So the denitrification concept it's pure insanity. They have a threshold that they want us to meet 10 milligrams per liter, okay? There are no systems on the market right now in Massachusetts that you can buy and put in at 10 milligrams per liter. There are three that are commonly used for septic systems, the Advantex, the Singular, and the Fast System. And those cost around 7,500 bucks, some might be a little more, you might spend up to 10 for these units. So it's just a treatment unit. With that comes annual testing, or annual maintenance at a minimum, and then the testing depends on what the DEP tells us. We've got to tell people to test. So they're asking us to, if we, if we don't sign up for their 20-year plan, which is what they really want us to do, 
which we don't know what it means. Then if you sign up for the five year, you gotta force everybody to do something. They don't even have systems on the market they can, we can make people do. It, they have a couple that are in piloting. They won't share what systems they are. I've asked the question. Um, we need to put the brakes on this, Mr. Mm -hmm. Schmidt. We need to defund, maybe, the DEP. Okay, if not, then all the towns should band together and sue the DEP or sue our own state because this is not right. There's a, there's a way to do this the right way. New construction, you said in Westport, any but new construction, now that makes sense, right? If you're planning to build a new house, what's another seven grand on the cost, everything costs now, right? So you can plan the budget accordingly. You can plan to put it in the, on the property accordingly the right way. And maybe you'll even have multiple selections, you know? But some of these to go back and retrofit and have people come back and, you know, the Board of Health, we're not gonna force that. I wanna know from the Board of so Select and check with Town Council, what if we say no? We're not doing the watershed permit. Come after us. We're not forcing anybody to put anything in either. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, the one thing we do have in this town is we have a denitrification policy that we set in place and it's just for percolation rates which are slower than 30 minutes per inch. The state allows you up to 60. So if you're between 30 and 60, your soils are lousy. We have a lot of lousy soil in town. Some parts of town are good. So those are the areas, and there are, there are a handful of systems in, in, the, in the community that we have put in place. I wouldn't have a problem if, for new construction, making somebody put it in. Let's go back and, you know. They know we're not gonna select the five-year plan because nobody, nobody's gonna sign up. I asked a question at the webinar, so, and it was a wise-ass question. I thought I was anonymous, but I guess my name was attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it said basically, so what happens when, um, you know, we sign up for the five-year plan and nobody wants to be on the Board of Health because nobody wants the stress that's gonna come with forcing everybody to spend money they don't have, you know? Will you, uh, will you give us money? Will you give people money? Will we have funds available? Are you gonna give us uh, town council for free? I mean, what are you gonna give us for help? I just got a wise, you know, wise answer back. Uh, they don't have the funding in place to deal with what they're trying to force. They don't have any funding in place. It's a joke. I mean, dude, think about it. How many people are on septic systems and you take 10,000, they're saying 20 to 25, that's if you had to put a whole new system in. But to retrofit, you can't just simply put a unit in the septic tank that you've had on the ground for 15 years. It's not easy. This needs to stop. They need to back up and take the next couple of years and come up with a real plan, real science to say where is the source is coming from. They could, we could go and opt for the five-year plan. Everybody can put in a D-night system and guess what? We don't meet their 75% reduction. Why? Because it's probably coming from cranberry bogs, livestock, farms, you know, there are so many other sources. They're not going after those folks, they're going after the septic system because they know they can, right? So this is pure insanity. It's equivalent to telling everybody, we're not gonna allow gasoline-powered cars in 18 months. So you have to figure out a plan. Guess what, there's none on the market either to buy. You only got one Tesla and your battery won't work in the wintertime. I mean, this is pure. That's what we're looking at. And these people are so arrogant. They sit up there and do these webinars and seminars. They don't care. They've already made their decision. They don't care. I mean, so our legislature needs to do something for the folks in Massachusetts. Uh, because this is a tax without representation as far as I'm concerned. There you go. There you go. Does anybody else would like to... Uh, yep. Mr. Boucher. Add something to some of the commentary here. Um, there's been a lot of great uh, points that have been made tonight. Uh, the bottom line, folks, is we don't want this de designation in our town. We don't want to give the Mass DEP the ability to just say, okay, next year um, you're considered a, a problem area. We don't want the 20 year permit um, because what happens if we're in that 20 year window and then somebody decides to sell their house? Are they gonna to have to add a nitrogen system uh, to, to, the, to the sale of the house and that's gonna come to their profit? Uh, I mean, this stuff is just ridiculous. I actually attended uh, a mass DEP meeting down in Hyannis. I didn't attend in person, I was via Zoom. Mr. Hinckley was down in person. 
and we both uh, opposed uh, what's being proposed to, uh, at that meeting tonight. Um, it's it, it's just ridiculous, and it doesn't end with nitrogen. There's some environmentalists down there who are speaking also about phosphorus as a potential problem down the road. So our fertilizers, the three main components of fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay? So this this insanity is not going to end here. It's going to continue with something else later on. I mean, this is just crazy. Um, and Ms. Davis made a good point. With fertilizers, who regulates the sale of fertilizers Thank in this you. country? The USDA and the EPA. They should be banning the sale of all this toxic crap that gets put on people's lawns. That's right. Okay? I mean, it's just, it's, it's bad for our kids, our pets, um, and it's just bad for the environment in general. Uh, come up with something else uh, that's not going to give us all cancer. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It really is. And I, I just thought. care about that. DP doesn't care about that. On Lawson Avenue, this from my house one block up, there's seven people that have had cancer, five of which have died. We've asked about a study over here. It's three years ago when all that started with the quarry. They have not even set foot down here. They don't care. The, the other issue is we, like uh, Mr. Gaspar said, uh, how many billions of dollars have we spent federally um, on infrastructure bills? Um, giving money away to other countries. Um, when is it going to end? I mean, if they want to jam something like this down our throat, then they should pay for it. They shouldn't make our residents pay for it. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't care if there's a 0% loan. Nobody should have to tack on $30,000 worth of debt onto their existing property. I mean, it's just, it, it's not right. A lot of us are retirees. We can't afford it. Exactly. Fixed it with our house. And they pay it you, you, gave, you gave me a mic, Rick Ellis, again. The, the thing is, you know, one of the scariest things, and, and this is in all seriousness, in 30 days, DEP has given us the ability to comment on this far-reaching uh, set of regulations. In another 30 days, they can change it again. And in another 30 days, they can change it yet again. I'm going to go back to what a previous speaker has said. There, there needs to be some breaks put on that organization. I mean, where they can come up with regulations that have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of effect on small, any community, and then change it again in 30 days. And who decides whether we're in the, that particular, uh, subject to this TMDL. Who decides what the TMDL should be? You know, who can change it in 30 days? I mean, we can go through all this stuff, you know, put these things in, in place in five, 20 years, and DEP can say, well, you know, we should have made it more strict. So now you've got another set of regulations that you've got to come up with because we're still not where we need to be yet. It, it's, there needs to be some kind of breaks to prevent that kind of, it's not even legislation, it's just promulgation of regulations that have such far-reaching economic effects. They shouldn't even, this shouldn't even be, we shouldn't even be talking about it. Not something that has the potential to cost. And, and I'm, not, I'm not throwing around the hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's multiply 30000 or $20,000 times every existing septic system user in a cushion is. We are talking about millions of dollars just in small accouchement alone. And it's, I don't know, it, it is insane to me. Sorry. So, so one, don't be sorry. You know, one you know, part I, of this um, I process <laughs> is that we, you know, as I'm hearing tonight, one of the things that we'll need to do as a board and as a community is really update you on the process, right? To try to like, make sure that you're not guessing of what's next or what's going on in the newspaper. Um, so we'll make a point uh, to par provide updates either at selectmen's meetings or on our web page, um, and, you know, through our social media posts. Uh, so we'll do our best to try and update you with that information. Look, Rep Schmidt has been representing a Kushnet for when you get sworn in, what, a couple days ago? Three days. <laughs> <laughs> Last week. I mean, honestly, I mean this, this guy has been, as a candidate, you know, was here all the time, and he's been representing a Kushnick for literally a few days now. Um, 
and he's been fantastic. So I know you'll, you'll provide us the updates that you see uh, fit. I think next week, the 17th, there's an, um, another session like this at UMass Dartmouth. I think it'll probably be a lot of the same of this, so that's why we wanted to do this here. So we know a lot of people can't get out there in the evening, so we at least wanted to provide this opportunity for you to hear our, our action plan, um, that it's on our radar. Um, we'll be working closely with our legislators. I don't know if anybody else has anything we want to offer up or add to the conversation. Again, if you have not signed the form letter, please, please do that. It's really, really important. It does make an impact. Um, and we will include that in our packet that we send uh, to the DEP as part of our public comment period, public, uh, public comment. Okay. Um, just two quick points. Um, can we get a copy of this video and send it over to Mr. Strauss? Since he's not here, he should know what we're saying as a town, not read about it in little snippets in the newspaper. And I'll, I'll be very happy to share okay, uh, I appreciate what I've heard. And number two, I'm serious about if we can find out, we say no. I don't want the 20 year plan. And I'm telling you right now, you know, as a board of health member, I'm not shoving down a system that anybody We resist, but I want to know what the repercussions are, you know, on the flip side. And I do have a septic system too, so I'm in the same boat. So I guess from, a, um, from an optic standpoint, a show of hands, again, it's symbolic, but it's. Is there anybody here in this in this audience tonight who thinks this is a good plan? <laughs> Are there anybody here in opposition to this plan? Please raise your hand. Safe to say it's an animal. Um, if there are no further comments, gentlemen, if Mr. You'd like Chairman, to put I think up. I think Senator Matigny's letter um, adamantly says D B back off. Rep. Schmidt's here. I happen to know Rep. Schmidt very well. He's a great, um, great man, great representative. I'm sure he's going to take this message to DEP, Senator Matigny, Rep. Strauss. Mr. Davinian, as a Board of Health member, strongly opposes all these regulations, DEP. I'm sure everybody in this room wants DEP to say, back off, you're out of your lane. Go after the big fish first. Let us know what the nitrogen load is first. What's your target nitrogen load to get to? Let's see what happens with our treatment plants and then come bug us in a decade and talk to us again. But mess off right now. This is, this is gonna bankrupt so many people and it's unfair that some of us would lose our houses because of this stupid ass regulation. Ooh, sorry. But, um, I apologize. I just want to say thank you guys for showing up. Being part of this town and getting involved is how we fix things and how we change things. And I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. Have a good night.